Okay, today's video is entitled AC Inductive Reactants Part 2, and we're going to go over conceptually voltage, impedance, and phasor diagrams for RL circuits. In the next video, I will go over some worked examples, but this is the basic circuit diagram that we're going to be using for this video. We have an RL circuit. We have a resistor R, an inductor L, and an AC voltage source. In the first part of this video, I'm going to show you how to draw the phasor diagram for the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor, how to calculate the voltage of the source, and how to calculate the angle between the current and the voltage for this RL circuit. Now, as a little introduction and a little review for this video, please remember that if you have a purely resistive circuit, that the current and the voltage across the resistor are in phase. That means when we draw the vector for the current, which we typically draw along the positive x-axis, that we would also draw the vector representing the voltage across that resistor also along the positive x-axis. <coughs> Excuse me. If we have a purely inductive circuit, we know that the voltage and the current are out of phase, and we use this simple device, ELI, to help us to remember that for an inductive circuit, that the voltage leads the current. That means we're gonna draw the vector once again for the current along the positive x-axis. Because the voltage leads the current, we're gonna draw the vector representing the voltage across the inductor on the positive y-axis, the voltage leads the current, and the angle between those, the phase angle, is 90 degrees. Okay? So that is our phasor diagram for our resistive circuits and inductor circuits, but we have an RL circuit, so we need to combine these two, which we're going to do on the next slide. Before I do that, I want to remind you that you can calculate the voltage across the resistor as V equals I times R. You can calculate the voltage across the inductor as V equals I XL. X is the symbol for reactants. Remember, resistors have resistance. Inductors and capacitors have reactants. We have XL because this is the reactants of the inductor. Okay, like I said, we're going to draw now the voltage phasor diagram. And you can see I brought with me the vector representing the voltage across the inductor, the vector representing the voltage across the resistor. I want to add these two vectors up to get the source voltage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move one of these vectors, the vector for the voltage, and as long as I don't change its magnitude and its direction, I can move that anywhere I want. I'm going to add those two up head to tail. The resultant vector represents the voltage of the source. You can see here we have a simple right triangle, and we have uh, we can therefore use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the magnitude of this vector. You should also want to point out that we have this angle. This angle is the angle phi. This is the angle between the current and the voltage for this RL circuit. Remember, for resistors, the current and the voltage are in phase. For inductors, they're out of phase by 90 degrees. So therefore, if we have an RL circuit with both of those elements, then the angle that the voltage leads the current is going to be somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay? And as I said, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is going to give us that V squared, the hypotenuse squared, is equal to VR squared plus VL squared. To get VS, we're simply going to take the square root of both sides, and we get that VS, the voltage of the source, is equal to the square root of the voltage across the resistor squared plus the voltage across the inductor squared. Okay, so here you can see we have our voltage phasor diagram, our voltage triangle, and this is kind of a graphical representation, and this is the equation we actually use to calculate the voltage of the source. Now I'm going to take this one step farther and show you how we could calculate the current if we know the appropriate values for the voltages, how we can calculate the current. Remember, we said the voltage across the resistor is V equals I times R. The voltage across the inductor is V equals I times XL. I'm going to take this term and substitute it in for VR. I'm going to take this term and substitute it in for VL. 
and square them. So I get the voltage of the source is equal to the square root of I squared R squared plus I squared XL squared. I'm going to factor out the I, the I squared or factor out I and I get the voltage of the source is equal to I square root R squared plus XL squared. I'm going to solve for I and then this term, which we'll talk about in a few minutes in this video, this term is actually, this term right here on the bottom, is actually the impedance Z. So I'm just going to substitute in, and that tells me that the current in this circuit is equal to the voltage of the source divided by the impedance. Okay, and we'll talk about what impedance is in just a second. Now I want to point out that this voltage, I didn't say whether this is the RMS voltage or the peak voltage, but you have to remember, if you use the RMS voltage here, then you're going to get the RMS current. If you use the peak voltage here, then you're going to get the peak current. So please be aware of what you're talking about, what you're asked for, and what you're given. Okay, you can't mix those up. All right, so let's see. This is our phasor diagram. This is how we calculate the voltage. This is how we calculate the current. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the phase angle phi, the angle that the voltage leads the current in this circuit, okay? Now, you'll notice here we have a right triangle, as we said. We can use our sine functions. In this case, we're gonna use the tangent. The phase angle is arc tangent of phi. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So that means the opposite is VL. The adjacent side of that triangle is VR. And the arc tangent of phi is simply equal to the voltage across the inductor divided by the voltage across the resistor. Okay, so I think that's everything we wanted to do for the voltages. We got the phasor diagram, we calculated the voltage of the source, and we got the phase angle. That is the angle by which, in this case, the voltage leads the current. All right? Now, the next thing we want to talk about is the phasor diagram for the impedance. Let's just remind ourselves what the impedance is. The impedance describes the total opposition to current flow in an AC circuit. Now you'll notice it says here total opposition. It doesn't say total resistance or total reactance. We have an RL circuit. So we have resistors. You have to remember, therefore, that resistors have resistance but no reactance. And inductors have reactance but no resistance. So for to get the impedance, which is the total opposition, we have to add up all of the resistances and all of the reactances. Now here we only have one resistor and one inductor, so it's pretty simple. Now, once again, when we draw the, um, the resistance vector, we draw it along the positive x-axis. That's kind of our reference axis. And because the inductor leads the current, we draw the, the reactance vector representing the reactance across or the reactance of the inductor along the positive y-axis. Once again, you'll notice we have the makings here of a right triangle, the impedance is the total opposition. So I'm going to add these two vectors up. I'm going to move this vector over again to add head to tail method. The resultant vector, the sum of those two vectors, represents the impedance Z. And once again, we have the angle phi, which should be the same angle you would get when you calculated the angle phi using the voltage triangle. So you can kind of check your work that way. I'm going to get rid of these definitions. And we're now we're going to calculate Z, basically the same thing, right triangle. Pythagorean theorem, Z squared is equal to R squared plus XL squared. Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus XL squared. This is how we calculate the impedance. This is kind of a graphical representation. This is our phasor diagram for the impedance, our impedance triangle, sometimes we hear it called. This is how we calculate the impedance, and once again, we can get this angle, which I told you should be the same value you would get using the voltage triangle. The arc tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, the opposite being the inductive reactance, the adjacent side being the resistance, and those two values you can use to calculate the angle phi. Okay? So let's see. I think we're done with the video. We did everything we wanted to do. We talked about the voltage, the voltage triangle, impedance, the impedance triangle, and the phasor diagrams, the angle phi, the phase angle, and I think that's all we wanted to do, and that's all we did. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, 
Give me a nice thumbs up for this video and also leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.